This is a Feathercraft pattern that uh, was designed for saltwater fishing, but after tying it and fishing it for smallmouth, it has become my number one smallmouth pattern for the Missouri creeks in my area. I love to fish this pattern in smaller creeks with a lot of um, pools, and um, what I'd like what I'd like to do is 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 throw it across, let it sink, and then strip it back. Um, the plunge pools that a lot of smallmouth like to hang out at the tail end of, I like to drop it down at the front of the plunge pool, let it go straight to the bottom, and then tail out the back, and that is usually where I pick up a lot of my strikes. A couple of things about this pattern that I really like is number one, of course, it's a sparkle, very, very sparkly type pattern that attracts smallmouth. Number two, it's a pearlescent color, which really does mimic the shiners in our Missouri creeks. Number three, it is a 360 degree pattern. As you can see, no matter how it rotates, falls into in, in around the plunge pool currents, the fish is always going to see the good side of the fly. There's no upside or downside, no top or bottom or left or right to this fly. It's 360 degrees. And that is one of the biggest things that I like about this pattern for smallmouth, especially the way I fish it. Number four, the ostrich that I'm using, which is called far in the pattern, is very uh, motion in, in the harder currents that we tend to fish for our smallmouth. And let me address the hook. The hook is a little more expensive than you would normally spend like on a must add on a, on a high carbon steel hook. This is one of those nickels designed for saltwater use and it doesn't rust. And why do I like that for my smallmouth is because I very, very, very seldom ever lose this fly while fishing because I'm always casting and fishing for smallmouth with a very heavy tippet, you know, like 17 pounds, somewhere in there. So there's almost no way that I'm going to break off and lose this fly. So this fly will sit in my fly box wet season after season after season. It is nothing for me to have a five season fly like this in my fly box when I go smallmouthing. The Estes chenille doesn't really hold the water in your fly box when you're done and the fish slime that you may get wipes right out of it because it's all synthetic. And those are a lot of the benefits that I like to look for in a smallmouth fly. Uh, there is some maintenance to all your flies, but this one has very little to go from season to season. So with that, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to tie this and I'm going to get a hook, which is, you can see a 93, 94 size 2 nickel hook. Uh, it's a straight eye, 3X heavy, 4X long forged nickel plated hook. So let's go ahead and adjust your jaws. If you've been tying a lot of your uh, trout flies with smaller hooks, be sure and adjust those jaws to adapt to the diameter of the wire of this hook. And then go ahead and clamp, clamp it in and get it solid. If you don't spend a second or two to adjust these jaws, you could clamp down and break the very top point of these jaws, making them useless for when you uh, go to tie your next trout fly. The weight on this fly I'm using is 35 or 30 or 35 thousandths round wire, and this is lead free. And what I'm going to do is, is I want this fly to pretty much lay level in the water column when I'm fishing it. I'm not looking for an undulating going up and down pattern. I want it to kind of lay straight in the water like you see a normal minnow in a creek. If I was tying this for my lake, I would really kind of want it to undulate as I strip it back to the bank. So if to keep it nice and even in the column, I'm going to put my weight in the center of the shank. If I wanted it to undulate going up and down in from my warm water lake, I would put the weight more towards the front of the hook. So with that said, I'm going to do almost the best I can for a one-third the hook shank here of weight. So I'm using 30 thousandths, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap backwards. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and now I come up and break it off. And I'm going to go ahead and scrunch this all together. And I'm going to look before I cut my tag end off. Why well, waste it? And if I'm not one third, I got about one third. I actually do need a little more. So that's about a 16. Looking at my hook shank. And I'm going from my barb straight up. That looks pretty darn close. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and slice off that little chunk. I don't want to overdo it. Uh, you don't want this thing to drop when you're fishing in those creeks. You don't want it to drop like a rock and hit the bottom and get snagged in the gravel or the rocks in the bottom of the creek. So you do have to be careful of how much weight you actually install on the shank. So like I said, a good rule of thumb is, is about one-third, one-third. So I'm going to go ahead and start right about here and wrap back. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap right over my lead. If you notice how my thread is not dropping in between the hood or the lead wraps, it's because I wrapped my lead in the opposite direction that I wrapped my thread. So I tie my thread in and it goes over the top of the hook shank where the lead did the opposite. The other thing I guess I should have said is, is I'm using Danville's flat wax red thread. And it's a heavy, very heavy, uh, thick thread. Um, it does lay flat. I really like it. it and uh, the color is red, but I like to consider it a gill color. So when you're picking out your thread, look for a red that reminds you of the colors of a gill when you open up a bluegill and look in, you know, and you see their gills. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and coat my lead. And the reason for that is also I want the red to show through my Estes somewhat if it should. I'm not really trying to tie to get the red to show through, but what I'm looking for is if there is an instance where the uh, Estes has a tendency to slide or open up a little, then I want to uh, have a little red underneath. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in my tail, and I'm using ostrich plumes, and you can see that, and I'm going to take and go right to the stem, and I'm going to pluck off five, one, two three, four, five, and now I'm going to go to six. I'm going to take six of these and cut them off at the stem. And now what I'm going to kind of do is not really worry about the tips. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come right about here in the beginning down by where I cut the stems off. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap my thread back with touching wraps coating my hook shank. I do not want my, my plumes to rotate around that hook shank. And nickel plated hooks are very slippery by the way. So if you can see I'm using the plumb bob effect and I'm actually looking at the beginning of my barb and that's where I'm letting my head, my thread hang. And that to me, I consider that the beginning of the hook bend. I don't want my tails to droop down on the hook bend. So I'm going to extend the tails up past the edge of my lead and I'm going to wrap forward once by putting the tails on my side of that hook. I'm going to pick up and rotate using the torque of the thread to bring that tail right up on top. And I'm touch wrapping, if you can see that. And I'm touch wrapping all the way up. And what I'm looking for here is as I wrap, I watch that ostrich and then when it, all of a sudden you'll see it there it goes i'm up against the back of the, the lead because they actually started to splay out away from the hook so i'll go ahead and cut these and now i've created a, a somewhat nice um, step so i'm going to take my tails come forward and i'm going to go about an eighth of an inch past my eye and cut them and i'm not going to cut them straight i'm going to cut them on a slant if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm cutting them on a slant like that. And now what that'll do is, is that'll allow my tails to actually not have a straight edge, but they're all somewhat a wee bit different length. So now what I'm doing is, is I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, 
adjust my focus here let's see right there okay so now I've got a nice taper by the way I did that and I'm going to get my Estes and I'm using what's called Estes Grande okay it's the size is Grande and it's pearl and you can pick this up at Feathercraft or a lot of places so if you look it's somewhat like hackle how crazy is that you can see the way it's kind of leaning forward somewhat so what I want to do is is I want to tie it in I'm not going to strip it or any of that stuff but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it in right there at the base of my lead and I'm going to wrap back with candy cane wraps I don't care about the touching to just about there I'm not going to go to the very end I don't want red on the very end of my fly so what I'm doing now is taping my thread forward I'm going to do a nice quick whip just to maintain it because I intend to use my rotary vise so cradle it with your finger here you don't need to use your cradle um, for your rotary so this is a very simple fly I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping notice what I did was is I came back to make sure I covered up the red here but I didn't move my tails if my tails were moving that meant then I drug the Estes over the top of the tail and I don't want that because then it'll eventually go down slide down that hook shank so pulling gently keeping nice tension on the Estes I'm doing touching wraps and as I'm wrapping I'm making sure I don't see any of the red between the the uh, cord of the Estes and I'm just going to wrap forward this fly is very simple but so dad burn effective when it comes to smallmouth I just drifted away a little so it doesn't hurt to back it up keep nice tension but you don't if you start to bend your hook you're pulling too hard and every now and then you can kind of choke it around there with your thumbnail and make sure you're not trapping all that beautiful sparkly stuff and keep wrapping forward as I'm wrapping forward I'm watching for any red that shows through now I'm at the end of that lead I'm gonna drop down boom and I'm not too worried about that I'm gonna go right about here and I'm looking at where I want to put my my uh, my head and so let me back this up this is nothing more than what happened when I rotated but because I put that half hitch in there I don't have a problem I just go back to where I get to my half hitch right there and so what you can see is is you can see the blank shank right there and that's about an eye and a half to two eyes that's the size of my head so I'm gonna leave that and what now I'm gonna do is is this is a little too narrow in diameter for our sparkle for our uh, shiners in our Missouri Creek so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna continue wrapping back over the top of my Estes and really filling out the body on this fly I didn't do just one wrap I'm doing two as I come back I'm watching how the the center becomes very full looks really good and I don't go quite back to the end I go right about where my point is at and then I start forward again and now I'm really filling it up keep these touching wraps don't go to a candy cane and and try to wrap really quick make sure that body stays nice and even in diameter and looking real full so now as I get to where my head is at I'm gonna go ahead and back that thread up again all the way to that half hitch and you can see it kind of caught some of them fibers and I'm not worried about them so I'm gonna pull everything back and I'm gonna come straight up and now I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in again this is such a simple pattern that you should be able to tie it in half the time that I'm tying it because I'm jibber jabbering so make sure you're not trapping much of anything up here keep it all nice and tight kind of push it back let me make sure I've got that hook chucked kind of push it back like you would do a deer hair but that's only to make sure that it's locked in again the nickel silver hook has a tendency to be very slippery so let's come in here and don't cut your thread and cut the top of that Estes 
Now that's pretty cool. You're almost done here. And so let's grab it like you would any other fly. Hold everything back. And go ahead and just start tying in. And I'm going to come forward. And I'm going to start creating my head. As I come forward, I'm going to cut anything I might have trapped. Again, no, this is for smallmouth, not a trout. And I know that smallmouth aren't nowhere near as picky as uh, trout are. And I also know they're not as picky as most fly tires are real picky about their flies. So you can see the length is about, I'm going to say, an eye to an eye and a half at the most in length. I still have a, a little bit of a naked shank right here behind the eye. And so now I'm up against my Estes, and that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to continue now using this large diameter thread. And I'm going to go ahead and create a nice head shape. I'm looking for that cone. And I'm not going to keep wrapping all the way forward and crowd that eye until I get that cone backside, the diameter I'm looking for. So I'm going to take a minute here and keep wrapping. And don't think that, oh, he's wasting thread. No, thread's cheap. And to make this head the way I want it, I'll spend the thread money. Because you wind up throwing thread away anyway. Mm -hmm. And I really like the way this head's taking shape. What I'm looking for is, is I'm looking for the head to be somewhat the same diameter as that big eye right there if you can see the eye and you can see my head's not quite the diameter of that eye so i'm going to keep going and don't forget to to do the back don't let that back taper down on you keep it almost as diameter as you can with that head And just keep wrapping till you get it. I know that when he tied that saltwater pattern that was half the size and diameter that I'm tying this one. There you can see the head diameter is actually uh, right at the height or diameter of that hook eye. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple more for general purposes. And I'm going to begin my whip finish. I'm going to create a little bit of a taper down because I did increase that head diameter. Now I'm going to go ahead and whip finish. Four, five. So one of the things I did want to say real quick about whip finishing notice how i'm coming off in the middle of that head well that's somewhat intentional on this pattern because i found that when i wrap all the way back or all the way, i get a tag end here that's oh so slight and and that red really stands out on the pearl so i don't want that little tag end from when i cut it to be up on that pearl so let's go ahead and fluff this out with our fingers and you can see how full that body is it's really good looking and I know the camera does not do it justice. But now what we're going to do is, is we're, we're going to somewhat shape this fly in a minnow shape. But keep in mind that it's a 360 degree pattern. So the first thing I want to do is, is I want to maintain a nice flat surface here because, well, bass pick up through those lateral lines, right? And so this little flat space up in here, I believe, again, this is me, creates a little bit of a sound wave through the water. So take a nice sharp, I'm using Dr. Slick scissors that are so incredibly sharp, I think they're a deadly weapon. I've cut myself with them. So start off gently creating, notice how I'm coming in at a slant to my tail. Don't cut your tails. And no need to get in near those tails either. Just cut at a nice slant creating a nice body and keep in mind 360 notice how i'm rotating don't just do a flat side 
and and think that all oh, this is the pattern because you're somewhat defeating what you're trying to achieve, which is again a fly that looks good going through the water current, twirling around like a minnow. The tails will give you the action you need. So I'm just going ahead and trimming it down. Notice I'm starting to get a nice taper. Let me clean this up and see if I got any crazies. Yes, that's looking really, really sharp. So now I'm going to come in here and kind of cut straight. I'm just laying the anvil right at the edge of the head, and I'm just cutting straight. I want those. I want that water, that that sound reverberation when this thing turns up towards the current. Now I'm holding it like at the bottom of the pool, like I was talking about on the plunge pool, and you hold on, and the fly swings around in the current, and then kind of swims in the current. Well, this, I believe, is creating a sound that the fish can also pick up along with the sparkle and the action. If you cut a taper, you can kind of do this, and this is the other thing, I finish it up, laying my ambles on the eye and just somewhat getting those high spots. That's all I'm really doing. I'm going to give this one more look and look for any strays. Nope, I'm not seeing any really. But that's pretty much the uh, taper I'm looking for. Again, these are smallmouth. Uh, not real particular. That if it doesn't, if it looks anywhere near natural, it's a good pattern. So let's clean this up real quick. You'll see the sparklies coming off. So there's the fly. That's the shape and all the rest of it. So now let's do the head. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is I really started liking this Solez. Um, this bone dry stuff is amazing. So I'm going to gently start on it. Stay away from the Estes. By all means, don't go back there and start and start going around very lightly and rotate your fly and let it and I got a piece of that stuck let's get that off and let's just go ahead and gently work it this is sealing that head up and it's going to give it a beautiful gloss it's going to look like like a true salmon fly so let it rotate Around as you got that bubble, don't let it just hang there, but let it rotate. Let's circle it around. And I'm going to put some more on there before I harden it because I don't have enough up here. I'm letting that capillary action do a lot of its a lot of the work for me. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to rotate and let it flow a moment. Really is flowing out nice. Now I'm going to take my light and start curing it as I rotate it. Again, I want that 360 degrees. Okay, let's give a little touch. Oh, she feels hard and good. All right, so the next thing you do, instead of buying eyes, now you're done. You can fish this fly just like that, and 99% of the time, that's what I do. But because I'm doing a video, I want to take some white fingernail polish, and I shook it up really well, and I'm going to open it up, and I've got a good old Chinese chopstick with a nice blunt end on it. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and dab some white fingernail polish on it. And I'm going to turn the fly sideways. And now I'm going to come gently down and touch. And now I'm going to rotate it and let it sit. While it's doing it, I'm going to do that side. I'm looking at the eye and I'm coming straight down the eye and I barely touch. And I rotate. It looks like I've got way too much but it's pretty dry.
I'm using my thumbnail to kind of clean it up. If you can see that. Stuff dries pretty fast. So we're taking black now on a smaller diameter stick. And we're just going to touch and touch. And we're about done. Let's do a little more. Okay. And there you have it. You got a great small mouth pattern that's balanced for the current. It matches our golden shiners. They're, that's what we refer to them as golden shiners um, in our little uh, creeks here in Missouri. The small mouth just tear it up. And like I said, you fish it in the plunge pool at the top, let it hit the bottom and go out the back of the plunge pool. When you're to a larger pool, cast it across and then let it sink and then strip it back. Strip it slow or strip it fast, depending on what the fish want. I also, when I'm fishing the Merrimack from a canoe, I really look for logs and wood and stuff like that. And I throw them all around the logs, wood and big rocks. Let this thing sit, all, go down past the rock and let it get to the level of where you think them fish are at because the Missouri creeks are crystal clear and you can see this fly a mile away and slowly strip it back. And that's the other thing. You can literally see that smallmouth come out and inhale this thing and just hang on. So there you have it. The Feathercraft Pearl Shiner.